Greetings! I am here now from my studio and I thought you might enjoy seeing what's next on my project list. So I have been asked to create a veil for a dear friend of mine and um, so here is what I'm about to do. I'm going to sew the veiling. I carefully worked with the bride yesterday to get all our measurements, get it cut out. And now I have carefully pinned this to a comb which has been wrapped in tulle. And uh, I'm going to carefully sew that down by hand. Now this bride did not want the typical gathering that you see. So I am first going to sew this down so that I can get these pins which could damage the tulle. Tulle is what we make a veil from. I have taken, uh, some people have weights for sewing. I really didn't think that was necessary. I like the idea of weights. So I made my own by taking little bags and just filling them with nuts and bolts that I had in the house. Remember, one of my things is to always make use of what I have rather than always having to run out and buy something. That's something I like to teach you as well course first thing I'll need to do is thread my needle. I'm using some good quality thread. I am pulling out extra because I will be sewing trim, lace trim to this. All right so if you don't know how to thread a needle you want to and none of this is something you have to be afraid of. A lot of people are very daunted by the idea of sewing a veil. Veils are terribly expensive and they I don't know why they are probably because they can get away with it. Um, and yet they're so easy to make. Um, well, easy does not mean that it doesn't take time. It does. So remember, there's a difference. Difficulty is one thing. Time consuming is another. This can still be quite a time consuming project. That could be part of the expense. So what I'm doing, which I often do, is if you saw, I just pulled it through the needle and I am lining up the edges. Now, if you've never seen how to tie a knot, it's called a tailor's knot. I'm going to come in close. Let me put it in front of my shirt so you can see it. I'll try not to block. Actually, okay, just so you can see a little better. I am zooming in. I moistened my finger slightly. I'm putting the two ends in front of my forefinger. Wrap it once. I, slow, I roll this off and then I pull it down. Okay, I'm going to show that again. So one more time. I moisten my fingers. I put it in front, the th two ends in front of my finger. Wrap it around one, full revolution. Using my thumb, I am rolling it off. And then I am grabbing this down. So you can see that makes a nice little, what they call a tailor's knot. There's other ways of doing knots, but this is my favorite way. Okay, let me show you. A little trick. So I am slipping this in here. Now you may find that your tailor's knot looks a little messy. My second one that I showed you frankly was a bit messy. I've since made a slightly neater one but I want to show you what you can do if you're not happy with the way your tailor's knot came out. Do you see how I'm pulling this through but I'm leaving a tail with the tailor's knot because I just assume because this is a bridal veil not have this show. I'm putting on a thimble. A thim Whoops! Don't poke yourself on pins. A thimble is a wonderful tool if you have one. This was my grandmother's so it's really special but I am using that. You don't want to poke yourself as you're pulling. Did you see how I backtracked a bit? So I am, whoops, it can get hooked on your watches and so forth. And you see how I have to keep smoothing this out with the weights. Okay, I'm starting to understand a little more why they do charge a lot for veils. But a lot of people do it more simply than this. But I think, um, okay, so let me just show you again. So I'm going to do a few stitches in the same spot. Now I have to, you might see some threads. You want to pull those through. You don't want a lot of bumpy, lumpy threads. I will later be cutting off that tail. But first, oh, here's a little tricky part. And you want to watch this. Do you see how this started? Okay. I got, I almost snagged this. 
So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to restart. It's okay for you to see some of the mistakes along the way. Okay, back to the drawing board. Just in case I didn't show you clearly enough how you even thread a needle to begin with, you want to look for that opening in the needle, pull it through. You must have clean edges before you do that. You can make your tailor's knot. Remember, roll it off, pull it down. If you see just a little bit of a tail, you can trim it off. But remember, we're going to be cutting this off anyway. So. Okay. Let's try that again. Being very, very careful. Be super. I'm sort of lifting this up. I'm carefully pulling it through. Take your time here. Let the tail stay on the back. Try to do three stitches right on top of your first stitch. That's another way to lock your thread into a place without even doing a knot. This time I'm leaving the pin to be on the safe side until I know I've got everything where I want. I do not want to snag anything. Do you see what's happening? The thread is not lining up, so I am using my finger to straighten it out before I pull it. If you don't do that, now this, what's going on here, it will make a problem for you. All right, now I'm going to come back and do two more stitches, trying not to block your view. Again, I find a good trick when your thread starts getting messed up like that. And by the way, pay attention to each stitch. If something doesn't look right, feel free to just backtrack, take it out. But once you put the needle through a fabric this delicate, you really do have to be careful. Sometimes, like I just did, you have to actually start completely again. That's okay. Sometimes, again, it's good for us to learn the art of patience, right? So do you see what I just did? I am pulling that initial knot back because I want that loose enough where I can do this. Now I'm going to put some additional pins here. I'll use different colors so you can see. So I'm going to put this pin here so that I can take out my first pin so that it won't get in the way of the threads. Okay. I'm going to now continue to carefully, we're just going to bring it through. And as I said, if you want a gathered veil, that honestly is easier. And all these little details wouldn't really be as big a problem. But because they wanted a smooth look, this bride, it's a little trickier. It doesn't mean it can't be done. Okay, now before I get too far, well, I don't even want to touch this yet. I will wait on that, and I'm going to be sewing pearls over this later anyway. That was also the bride has some pearls from her mother's veil, which is going to make it really special. But I will also be sewing around the border over the lace. Now, okay, here's where I need my thimble again. You do really want to poke your fingers if you can help it. Also, be aware, if you do poke yourself, nothing horrible will happen to you. You might get a little, you know, prick. But if you do, then you've got to make sure that you quickly wash your hands and if necessary, put on a Band-Aid because you do not want spots of blood getting on your veil. That would not do. Okay, you see now I was able to take that out. Now this will go a little more easily. I actually wish I had wrapped this. This comb came to me. I would have done the tool. I probably would have wrapped a strip of tool around this. Again, I think I might later show you how I do that because that just makes it easier. It gives you more to grab onto when you're sewing. Okay, so I'm just going to continue here. I'm not going to show you every step. I don't want to bore you. I realize I should show you what I'm doing at the end here. So I am doing now three stitches at the end, right on top of each other. Again, anytime it starts to snag, pull that back 
and then carefully pull it. Okay, now I've done three stitches on top. I am going to super carefully cut. I have to really be careful that nothing else is getting in the way. Use very sharp scissors. And remember that first spot, I'm going to carefully trim that. I'm also seeing, well, I'm gonna wait until I can get under there, but that is good for now. Okay, now I have started to pin this lace that the bride got. Um, she actually got it from the company that is making her dress. So, the, you know, the same um, manufacturer of the dress. So they had extra lace that she was able to purchase. But do you see how this is springing up? I think I'm actually going to have to unpin this and gently press this first. Even though I will be steaming the entire veil, of course, when it's done, uh, I don't want to have things lumpy and bumpy. The other thing to be aware of is um, which way you want this going now, because this has uh, embroideries coming out. That would look rather awkward coming off. So we determined with the bride that we are having this go right along the edge and then we're going to have those parts that extend further go on to the lace. This will make a nice framing. And by the way, she decided she wanted to start this um, not at the top because she didn't want anything obstructing uh, the view of her dress, which is beautiful, and or of her face. Okay? Okay, so before I take out these pins because I want to iron, I'm going to use some painter's tape. Painter's tape is just something that artists and painters use. I'm just going to fold this. Actually, I'm going to take a longer piece. I'm going to put it here. Put this down. And then, to hold it in place, because I think something I used yesterday fell down, I'm just going to pin this carefully. Make sure you're using a thin pin. And then, to make sure that this pin doesn't snag or fall out, I'm going to cover that up, okay? So this is how I'm just marking. I will measure and mark the other side as well before I remove all this so that I can now go ahead and remove these so I can carefully iron them without destroying the tool. Okay, so I just want to show you, I'm laying out my tool I have taken a little uh, tabletop ironing board with a cover. I have found either a cloth napkin or some thin fabric um, that I have on hand. It could be uh, a sheet. If you don't have fabric, don't worry. It could be muslin. What we're going to do with this is protect the uh, lace from too much heat. Let me just point out that, of course, I've turned my iron to the lowest setting. I do want steam. I am using the end of lace that I have a little extra of. I'm going to make a little sandwich of the lace. And again, this is a, an extra piece. I'm, fortunately, they got a little extra, which is always a good idea. I am carefully folding that over it. And this way I am testing it. Okay, good. And you can see the lace came out flat. I would do little sections at a time. Also, there's a right side and a wrong side to lace. Make sure you've got the right side up. I think it will be pretty self-explanatory for you. Okay, I decided I better make sure that I can iron my tool. So I have taken, again, a scrap to test it on. And I still have it on the lowest setting, nylon, satin, uh, uh, no, nylon synthetic, excuse me. And I refilled the iron, okay? And again, I'm using the pressing cloth on both sides. Remember, a pressing cloth can be as simple as uh, just a clean sheet, or it can be fabric, whatever you have. Okay, so now I decided, because there is so much tool to iron, I took out my bigger, you know, regular sized ironing board. I don't like to have that up when my grandchildren are around because they're toddlers, but they're not here. So I've put um, 
a cloth down that I ironed the cloth. You can still see a few wrinkles underneath. And once again, I'm going to cover it with another cloth, make like a little sandwich. And make sure you keep feeding that iron. Excuse all the mess in the background. I've got a lot of projects waiting in line to show you. Okay, here's another option because honestly, the ironing board thing is getting old and I feel like it wasn't taking out the wrinkles as much as I would like. So I have loaded my iron with water. I did test this first and I'm just pressing the steam button repeatedly while holding the tool up in the air. Now you're gonna have to shake it out a little bit, move it around, but this actually seems to be doing a better job than when I was painstakingly moving everything around. Now, the one thing is, this will blow through water in a hurry, so you're going to need to frequently refill. If you have a steamer, great, but I thought a lot of you, most of you maybe, would not have access to that, and I'm trying to show you how you can do things mostly with what you've got on hand here. So again, be careful. Test this on um, scrap tool first. And speaking of tool, not all tool is created equal. The bride provided this tool for me because they had actually purchased uh, this tool because it was the exact shade for her dress. That's a really good thing to do because veils I've made in the past, just finding the right shade, you might think, well, it's white or off-white. There's actually so many other shades, and it's important to see it up against the dress. And the quality, as I said, is not created equal, and I can give you a pointer on that. Okay, now, uh, I'll get back to you on the tool. I called my favorite tool store, and it sounds like they're closed. I wonder if they didn't survive the pandemic. I'll get back to you on that. Um, in any case, if you can see what I am doing now, I spread out my uh, newly steamed out tool, and I made sure that this comb is facing the correct direction, uh, and that I have the blusher, which is the part that goes across the face, is going to be up, which is not going to be lined, and that this side, which is, let me put this in your picture, uh, and remember, we have to have this lined up and facing inward. It is going to be much easier now to properly get this in place. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to hand sew this or machine sew, or it may be a combination. Um, but first, I'm going to carefully try to start pinning it in place. I want to make sure you can see what my hands are doing. Let me move this back in place here. Okay. Okay. So now I am trying to decide whether or not to hand sew the lace on. I started hand sewing, but I thought, let me see if the machine will work. So let me... So I'm trying to show you a little bit about how I line this up. And I'm trying to get in close enough to show you. I know there's people who clean out their entire refrigerators on YouTube one-handed, but I needed to use both hands. So I am now using a long stitch. That means um, I'm at the basting stitch. Now, this may end up being more trouble than it's worth. I am going to, whenever you want to change direction with your sewing machine, you have to lift up your presser foot as I just did. Because there are these long parts coming out, let's see. I will see how this works. I just have to do this a little bit and experiment. And again, of course, I'm experimenting on scrap lace and scrap tool because uh, I'm not about to mess up this veil after all this work. So. I am sewing especially into the embroidered sections because that will help hold it on better. This may work. I also cut my scrap of tool to be in a curve shape, sort of the way the veil is. So look, you're not going to be able to, I'm not going to sew down every single corner of embroidery. But I think this may be doable. Okay. 
Okay, so if you can see, it looks pretty good. I do see some stitching from the machine, but I don't think it would be noticeable, especially people are going to not be examining it as closely as I am. I do see this coming up. I'm going to have to make efforts to sew that down a little bit better. Let's try again. Let's just try what happens if I go like this. And so right to the tippy top of each of these extensions. Uh, you could probably guess I'm starting to take back everything I said about why are veils so expensive. <laughs> In fact, the last time I made a veil, it was even more involved than this. And it was because the bride's the veil the bride wanted was, I think, going to be $1,100, and we thought that was so insane. But after my daughter and I finished it for her, my daughter was the maid of honor in that wedding, we realized that that was a bargain <laughs> with the amount of work we put into it. It was pretty crazy. Um, so uh, here's a fun little thing that can happen when you're sewing. And when I say fun, I mean kind of not. And that is that you can be sewing for a long time and not realize that your bobbin ran out of thread. Super annoying. So when you're doing tricky sewing like this, make sure your bobbin is fully loaded. It's, um, it's important to me that you see that life <laughs> and creativity, that expression by, was it Einstein who said, um, uh, it's, you know, it's, 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration is so true. Okay, so I'm looking at this after I reloaded, sewed more down. I'm trimming the little threads off all the way very carefully. I am not sure. I'm going to iron this and then check. So I don't know if you can see, but I, I don't know that I'm entirely happy with the way the thread is showing from the machine. I think for now I'm going to hand sew. Okay, so here is the hand sewing on the actual veil. As you can see, I pinned it down all along. I am just going to carefully sew for a while. I think there's going to be, um, I, I listen to a lot of inspirational things while I do a lot of tedious work and it can be a little meditative. Um, so I will keep sewing. I'm just trying to show this to you closer so that I can keep this looking as nice as I can. Okay, another nice thing about doing this by hand is the bride also wanted to include, I think I mentioned pearls from her mother's wedding gown or veil. So this is not hard. I have to make sure my needle is thin enough. Uh, Good, it makes it. So what I did is I pulled this up, I'm putting the pearl down, and then I'm going to, it's, it's not hard to do, hopefully you can see I am just going to put my needle right back in very close. I'm moving this cup, don't wanna spill all the pearls. I have a bunch to work with here. I'm pulling this through, and again, you see I'm using my finger to guide it now. I've sewn the pearl down, can you see that? I know it's a little bit small, but that way you don't really see, and it's you see the pearl, which is nice. So I may go back and put some more here, but what's nice is if I sew by hand, I'll be able to do that, okay? Hi there. I just thought you might wanna see how this is coming along because I've been working on the veil now for uh, several days. Okay, so I am just showing you that now what I'm doing, I ended up deciding to sew a combination of hand and machine. So I started sewing with the machine, finding a line where I could do that without, so I kind of went along where the thread would not show. And then, because I'll just show you here where I still haven't sewn it down, so by hand, I'm sewing down these pieces, okay? And as I do that, I'm also sewing on the beads and I'm going through by hand. So yes, this is a time consuming project. I will show you when it's all done.